Last weekend, a family of four was rescued from the mouth of Patterson River. It's a story we're all too familiar with. For a century, people have been getting into trouble at Patterson River. Some have been rescued and some have drowned. Almost a decade ago, a father and daughter got in trouble at the river. The daughter made it to shore, but the father didn't. His body was retrieved by a jet ski later. It's so similar to what happened on the weekend just gone, where a father and three children got into trouble at Patterson River. We're thankful to passers-by we were able to help them. I was one of the crew in 1998. They got called out on New Year's Eve to the reports of a missing boy. He drowned in exactly the same spot. Uh, we were confronted with the scene. I mean, you had the father and Roxy had just pulled him out. And, um, a couple of you were comforting him, you and the other gentleman was comforting him. And had someone on the phone calling for the ambulance. So, um, I guess our immediate concern was, was there anyone else there? And I think you pointed out that the girls were up on the beach safely, so uh, that was good. But, um, I'd spent most of the afternoon down that end of the river watching people, um, particularly people that were, for some reason, deciding it was a good idea to drink a lot of alcohol and jump off the train bridge, uh, which is just crazy. So all we can do is advise them that it's a silly thing to do. Effectively on the uh, 3rd of uh, January uh, 2015, as soon as the uh, new year came, I did come um, uh, with my partner fishing uh, to stop here on the uh, rocks, uh, on the pier. Uh, there was a sudden weather change, we had a very, very hot day that day. Uh, I think it was about 38, 39 degrees. Uh, and by the evening, it got uh, very, very windy and uh, uh, stormy. So. Uh, effectively, the weather, the weather pattern changed very quickly, and the uh, waves uh, picked up uh, up to chest height almost. Uh, that's what I remember personally. And um, uh, all I heard was uh, I threw my rod inside the water, uh, sat down for about five or ten minutes, and uh, literally within ten minutes, the weather changed dramatically, uh, and all we could hear is uh, repeated screams. Uh, three young girls, uh, approximately I think two, four, nine years old, uh, along with their father, had been um, uh, swept a little bit by the waves uh, onto the deep end and they uh, were screaming for help. Um, it was quite tragic. Uh, first thing I did was uh, uh, take my clothes off and my thongs. Uh, I was in the opposite side of the pier, probably about 100 and uh, something meters away, uh, so I did run uh, barefoot right here on the rocks on the big boulders and, and made a move. I don't know how to swim, uh, it was pure instinct. Uh, the people were screaming for help, what else can you do? So uh, I jumped in and I started kicking all fours with all fours. Uh, by the time I jumped in, somebody had already gotten to the uh, uh, baby, the youngest one, um, and uh, so to be exact, it was the two-year-old being held by the father, uh, the four-year-old a couple of meters behind them, and I believe it's a nine-year-old uh, another few meters further again. Um, the father trusted her because she was a little bit older, so she was a little bit further. The two-year-old was the first one to be saved, uh, luckily, thank God. And um, uh, the gentleman that actually uh, saved the baby uh, went back in to uh, get the father. The father was very, very tired, probably cramped as well. So uh, it was a little bit of an effort there. Uh, don't know how I did it. I actually got to uh, probably about a meter from the gill. Uh, once again, kicking all fours. And um, the first thing I said to the gill is, uh, please don't drown. Out of instinct. Uh, also, don't know how it all worked out, but the gill calmed down uh, automatically in a split second, the screams and the cries. And uh, I turned around as soon as I saw it calm down and I said, please hold on to me. Uh, we started, I, st I started kicking again. <laughs> you know, far as you, I got uh, probably three quarters, uh, a couple of meters away from the rocks only. And um, the young girl asked me, am I gonna die? So I said to her, of course not silly. We've made it, we're just here. We're only two meters away. By the time I said that and I used up all my breath to calm it down, 
a big wave came and took me right under and I drank some water. Uh, that uh, effectively included the girl uh, holding me a little bit tighter by the neck. Uh, and as a normal uh, human instinct as you would, you push her away. I did push her away uh, probably about half a meter from me. Uh, so I can get back up of course and, and grab her again. Uh, as soon as I got uh, back up uh, and got my first breath out of the water, the, um, the first thing I said was uh, to a couple of people on the rocks, uh, please help me, I don't know how to swim, just in case. We had come a long way, uh, three quarters of the way, so uh, I didn't want to be too proud and <laughs> effectively uh, make a mistake there. Uh, such an important situation and uh, somebody leaned over to grab me. Instead I uh, grabbed the girl and pushed her towards the gentleman so she can be safe first again. Uh, they did pull her in and uh, by then I had managed to catch my breath and uh, swim back to the rocks by myself. Uh, somebody leaned over and gave me their hand and um, uh, probably three or four of us were stuck on the rocks for a couple of minutes. The waves were very very strong. Uh, we did all get a few cuts. Uh, probably top to bottom, better hands, and uh, as the waves were hitting us from rock to rock almost, uh, we caught our energy back and uh, effectively uh, uh, climbed back up safely. By that time, the ambulance, uh, forgive me, the uh, life saving team uh, down at Karam uh, did, uh, did make it uh, very quickly down there. Literally within seconds, the guys made, uh, were on site and uh, requested assistance. Uh, the ambulance came, uh, two ambulances actually came, uh, three nurses there and the uh, first thing they did was attend to the father. The father they had to take uh, his blood pressure and make sure he's all right. Uh, and we were all panicked and uh, shocked. Probably took me about 15 minutes to catch my breath. Indeed. And that's about it. Now Nick, one of the things you said was there was a point where you let go of the girl um, to catch your own breath and look after yourself. Now I just want to make sure that you realise that's exactly what you should have done. Because so many people get into trouble trying to help others and we've seen time after time people drown trying to rescue other people and the other people make their own way back in. So what we don't want to see, we could have easily had five or six or seven drowned on that day, but you made sure you looked after yourself first and then looked after others and you managed to do both. So for that you ought to be commended mate, well done. Awesome. I'd just really like to show our appreciation for um, the bravery that you showed by just having no consideration for your own safety and hearing the young girls screaming, just jumping in and uh, the conditions were very blustery and it's incredibly dangerous here at the Mountain River at the best of times. But to um, just be in the right place at the right time for the girls' sake um, and just on behalf of the community and the really I'd really like to thank you for your efforts and applaud your bravery again. And uh, hopefully we'll see you down here and um, have a chat and we can get you out in the water and show you a few tips on how to get swimming and uh, it's no problem at all. Just come down any time. Right. I just want to say thank you. You may not have realised we were on patrol all day on Saturday. And as you know it was a hot day, it was a blustery day. The things that we were worried about late in the afternoon with the cool change and all the winds changing was the people down here at Patterson River and we did have people here all day. Um, our patrols finished at six o'clock. We kept people here for an extra half hour and then eventually we decided you can only do so much and, and we went home. If people like you, and I know you weren't the only one there, there were others that were involved, but if people like you weren't involved, then I would have been at home reading about this the next morning in the paper about a family missing at the river and I would have been thinking, what if? What if we had a stay? Was that the family that we were watching that we were worried about? So I just want you to know that for me and the others at the club, you and the others that were there saved us an awful lot of angst. And I cannot thank you enough. All right? Thank you so much, mate. Going back through the records, we're finding records every decade, back to the 1920s, of people drowning at the mouth of Patterson River. And the story is always the same. People underestimating the risks and getting in the trouble. We do not want you to be the next person to get in the trouble at Patterson River. Patterson River is dangerous because of the rocks, the 
very sudden drop off and the tidal currents that affect that area. Tides can change, currents can change, and even on a crystal clear flat day, there can be serious undercurrents that'll sweep you away from the, the beach and into deeper water where you will get into trouble. And then you'll be swept into the mouth of the channel, you'll be in amongst the boats, and you'll be in amongst the rocks. Happens time after time. The safe place to swim at Curran Beach is between the flags outside the Surf Life Saving Club. And even when the Surf Life Savers aren't on patrol, the best place to swim is still outside the Life Saving Club. There's a no boating zone and you're well away from the tides and currents that affect the Patterson River.